Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland and here I am in London in front of the tomb of Sir Hans Sloane. So I'm on Chain Walk uh, in Chelsea uh, and where so many things are named in honour of Sir Hans Sloane. Um, not far away there's Sloane Square, um, there's um, Sloane Avenue, things like that. And there's Hans Crescent and so on. So, and we're just a stone's throw from the River Thames. You see there the wall of the embankment and Old Father Thames beyond. I'm not sure where Hans, Hans, Sir Hans Sloane's um, house is, but it doesn't remain a anymore, it doesn't exist any longer. And then you can't see it from here, but up this way, about a mile, is, is the Chelsea Physic Garden, which she founded. Physic, well, mm, was uh, that medicine, really, or an area of biology, but uh, it, was, it was growing plants and herbs to be turned into medicines. That was the idea of a Physic Garden. Um, Anyway, Sir Hans Sloane, uh, he was born in Killalay, County Down, Ireland. The only other famous person to, to, to live in that village was uh, the celebrated uh, gardener, John Cushney, who died 10 years ago. I wonder if he lived there partly because um, uh, Sir Hans was also famed as a horticulturalist and a naturalist. So um, Sir Hans's father was a land agent for the Earl of Clanbrassil, one of Ireland's more notable um, uh, landowners. That's why there's Clanbrassil Street in Dublin, formerly Little Jerusalem. Anyway, so um, Sir Hans had several siblings. He was the eldest surviving brother, which is why he inherited the baronetcy. He's, uh, he's Sir Hans Lone Bart, Bart short for baronet. Because if you're a baronet, the title goes from father to eldest son, assuming you're not born the wrong side of the blanket. Um, whereas if you were a knight, then the knighthood dies with that individual. So these baronets have been, been, been introduced by King James I of England, King James VI of Scots, being the same person. But back to um, Sir Hans. Um, so he read with avidity and he was uh, um, smitten by the travel bug. Uh, but anyway, he came here to study um, Materia Medica, which is the foundation of medicine. Um, universities usually didn't do medicine. Well, many doctors didn't didn't go to university. They just studied at hospitals. So it was much more informal in those days. And eventually, we all awarded, awarded a medical degree. So he studied here. I don't know which hospital he was at. And um, then he travelled around France very extensively. And later, he, he was qualified as a doctor. His father died when he was five, but they had plenty of money. So. Um, uh, his family had um, um, emigrated from Scotland a few generations earlier and shifted to Ireland. His, he was probably in, of English stock on his mother's side. So he can be regarded as um, Irish, and Scots, possibly English. <coughs> Incidentally, um, he was brought up in the Church of Ireland, the established church, and um, public offices were only open to them, so the majority of us Catholics and a few Presbyterians and so forth were discriminated against by law. Um, so. Uh, Anyway, um, yeah, this is his tomb, and you see up high the snakes wrapped around that orb, like snakes of Aesculapius, like you're milking them, the venom from their fangs for the anti-venom. So it's a fine 18th century um, uh, monument of a tomb. Um, so we'll, we'll go, go a bit closer, read a bit of the inscription here for you. Uh, what does it say? In memory of Sir Hans Sloane, President of the Royal Society and the College of Physicians, who in the year of our Lord, 1753, and the 92nd of his age, without the least pain of body and with a conscious serenity of mind, ended a virtuous and beneficial life. This monument was erected by his daughters, his two daughters, Eliza Cadogan and Sarah Stanley. So they, they, they married into notable families, as in the Cadogans will have um, Cadogan Gardens and Cadogan Square in their honour. And uh, there's the, uh, there was the Earl of Cadogan, the Stanley family, a been prominent in the English Midlands for centuries. And remember, Lord William Stanley um, was the one who was really the kingmaker at the Battle of Bosborough in 1485 and they were later elevated to the peerage, the Earl, of, the Earl of Derby, and that's why there was one Lord Derby who was, who was um, uh, Prime Minister, there was the Lord Derby scheme of the First World War, another Lord Derby set up the race, the Derby, which is held nowhere near the town of Derby, it's called the Derby because it's Lord Derby who set it up. Um, so Stanley since became a Christian name, there became this craze in the 19th century for middle class and working class families to take the surname of a noble house and use it as a Christian name, like a personal name. So back to, back to him. He was elected to um, uh, the Royal Society of London um, at the uh, age of only four and twenty, which was positively juvenile to get that age, to get that, that honour. Um, the Royal Society of London, as in for the advancement of natural knowledge, I think that's the full name, i.e. science. Um, so a, a very a select scientific society. I don't know a great deal about it. I can't remember the current president's name. He's, he's, a, he's a British Indian, the president at the moment, the first British Indian to hold the, the office. 
um, so they're just called the Royal Society for short. Um, and the uh, head of the head of the um, College of Physicians, i.e., the professional body for doctors regulating that uh, profession. What are the standards? Who's allowed to be in? What are the ethics and all the rest of it? So he's a very distinguished gentleman, very wealthy. Um, had all the best people as his patients. So he was a man of some consequence. His brother was a member of Parliament, I know less. Uh, anyway, he went on a voyage around the Caribbean. Now, despite belonging to a profession that was dedicated to healing and to relieving suffering, he evinced not the least sympathy for the unfortunate people who'd been abducted in Africa, taken across the ocean in the most appallingly inhumane conditions and subjected to the lash and every conceivable torture to wring every last drop of sweat and blood out of them, um, toiling under the broiling sun in the Antilles. Um, so he just went along with the outright racism of the time and the satanic cruelty of slavery. So yes, he certainly had a moral blind spot there. So 92 was a very great age to live to um, back then. Uh, but as it's, it's documented, there's no doubt that he did live to that age. So he obviously knew something about healthy living. Um, he did a lot of, they donated a lot of money to Christ Hospital, which is a school, not an infirmary despite the name, and other charitable causes. Um, so that is just a little introduction to her, Sir Hans Sloane. You can see many, many um, uh, portraits of him, and he wore those uh, long wigs down to his shoulders long after that was fashionable when he was, when he was a geriatric. That's enough from me. Toodle-pip.